everyone. Again, my name is David Bell. I'm the regional manager for the Southeast for Rapid Forum uh, and now part of 3D Systems. Uh, big news for us. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Rapid Forum XOR and live transfer to SolidWorks. So some of you are probably familiar with XOR and how we do reverse engineering. We're not going to spend a, a lot of time on the modeling process itself, but we will go over a little bit so you'll, you'll get an idea of it and we're happy to talk to you more about that. Uh, but today we're just going to be going over the basics of RAFFORM XOR and then show you what it's like to live transfer the actual parametric data from XOR over to SOLIDWORKS. So as I mentioned, uh, as of today, and this happened just a, about a week and a half ago, we are now part of 3D Systems. Um, many of you know 3D Systems as a, a leader in uh, 3D printing and services and materials. Um, so. Uh, we are now a part of that family of products. Uh, as for RapidForm, we're now 3DS RapidForm, and we've been developing the RapidForm software for processing 3D scan data since 1998, with more than 10,000 licenses sold worldwide. We've got fo over 40 people in research and development, and we're sort of uh, a real innovator when it comes to scan to CAD processing. We've got over 30 patents in this area, and you'll get to see some of this technology in the demonstration. We're going to be going through just a few PowerPoint slides here first, and then we're actually going to pull up the software and SOLIDWORKS and show you exactly what the live transfer process is like. Now, in addition to selling the products, we also have a very strong support team. So we've got 30 engineers who help our support our customers every day, and over 200 resellers worldwide uh, that can both provide both support and training. And now with our, our recent uh, integration with 3D Systems, we're part of that family, and we're uh, stock exchange listed as DDD. So over all these years we've been adopted into almost every industry um, by major companies and small companies alike. Here you see just a, a tiny sample of some of the, the larger companies that we work with worldwide from video games to NASA to consumer products, automotive, aerospace, you'll find a little bit of rapid form everywhere. So we call RapidForm XOR the fastest path to CAD. Now the process is, is capturing your point cloud or mesh data using a 3D scanner. And then we use RapidForm XOR to model that, to create the solid models within XOR. And that's a very powerful thing. In XOR we have all of the scan data, all the scan data processing functions, and we have a complete CAD kernel. So we're, you know, everything that you may be used to in SOLIDWORKS, we're actually built on the same underlying modeling kernel of SOLIDWORKS. We use the Parasolid kernel. We have a very similar sketching system, so if you know how to use SOLIDWORKS, odds are you already know how to use RapidForm XOR. Once we complete models inside RapidForm, we can not only go out to SOLIDWORKS, but also Inventor, um, Siemens NX, Pro Engineer, um, a number of different formats, and of course the industry standard formats like IGIS and STEP. So we've done some benchmarks, and sort of over here on the right, you know, if you're trying to do reverse engineering without scan data, and just sort of taking measurements and, and working on models, we're seeing that something complicated like this impeller can take 12 hours to create that model. Now we've got some 3D scanning software where you're capturing and maybe you're extracting some curves or some datums and planes and trying to extract those things and use those to guide conventional CAD modeling. You can see we can bring that down to about six hours. But our internal tests have shown that we can complete a model like this in as little as an hour. And, and we've seen that time and time again that our customers are, are really seeing a, a quick return on investment with RapidForm versus any other um, traditional reverse engineering methods. So it's, it's not just us that says this. There was a, a significant study done by the U.S. Air Force in 2011 um, where their conclusion of that study, and of course you can find this on our website, RapidForm is the only viable choice for parametric solid model, um, which was a pretty strong statement for them to make. They had looked at all the other um, options available back in 2011, and um, this innovative workflow that we've talked about is the one that they chose uh, to present to the Air Force and recommend that they use moving forward. And we continue to work with them uh, almost daily. Just a few more slides showing some quick examples before we move on to actually a live demonstration. Uh, most of you know this guy, J10 and J10's Garage, quite an extensive collection of vehicles there. 
And one of his passionate vehicles is this 1935 Fraser Nash. So this is an example of what the actual original part of this, I think it's a thermostat housing um, from that vehicle, and how they were able to scan this geometry and produce this new part. A little bit of what that, uh, that process looks like is, here's the raw scan data uh, that was captured. And we use something called region groups, which is a sort of uh, feature recognition. It's not too much rocket science. We're just looking for changes in curvature in the model. And when we get these different regions, we're able to classify them as, as planes or cylinders, freeform shapes. And we can use that to help extract datums, planes, other features. And it, it helps to align the model as well. From the scan data, we're able to create sketches. And this process is very much like you would use in CAD today. You're, you're drawing lines and arcs um, and splines, whatever you need to do. But the advantage of having the scan data as a reference um, makes it so that you're not just measuring and trying to type in values. You're actually fitting to the data that you see in the view window. And we'll show you that here shortly. So you build features one by one, just like you would in a, um, a regular CAD system. Uh, we do have some modeling wizards and other things to automate a lot of this process. Add details such as radii, chamfer, uh, lots of different things. And then once you're finished with your model, you can use live transfer to get it out to the CAD system. All right, enough PowerPoint. Let's pull up the software and see what we can do. So I pulled up some, some rather incomplete scan data. Uh, this was actually poorly scanned on purpose. Uh, scanned on a, a card table, I think. So the data is very noisy, it's incomplete, um, and our goal here was to create a solid model and get it over into SolidWorks. So I've already done a lot of the modeling on this. So I've gotten it to this stage. You can see that I have a complete feature history tree over here. And we can roll back through that and see exactly how this model was created. But let's, let's add a new feature and we'll see exactly how that's done. So I'm going to turn on the scan data. And I'd like to add this pocketed feature right here on this part. Now up here at the top, I've got sketch. And that would allow me to create CAD sketches just like any conventional CAD program. And I've also got Mesh Sketch. And Mesh Sketch is the one that gives me all of the sketching tools, but also allows me to reference this Mesh data. So those of you who aren't familiar with the scan data, I'll zoom in a little bit and show you that the data that we have is really just what you might think of as an STL Mesh. We've taken the point cloud collected by the scanner and connected the dots with triangles. And that gives us the Mesh that we'll use as a reference. So again, I'm going to create this cutout here, and we'll say Mesh Sketch. It asks me what plane I want to use for my sketch, and I've already set up a plane over here. That's plane 3. And so once I select that plane, it shows me the intersection of that plane with the scan data. And I can now move this arrow back and forth through the model to see what that intersection looks like. Now I'm not moving the sketch plane in this case, I'm just moving what data is going to project up to my sketch plane. All right, that looks pretty good right there. I'll say OK. And I know there's a lot of icons on the screen. Don't be intimidated. A lot of these are very familiar to you. Lines, rectangles, circles, arcs. You know, if I want to start drawing things freeform, I can certainly do that. But we're going to be able to fit to the data. Down below these standard sketching tools, are my visibility icons, the ones that toggle yellow to indicate that they're on or off. So I'm going to hide the scan data for the moment. And this pink outline you see on the screen is my cross section that I can work from. Now on this part, and I'll rotate it just to give visually, I actually want to make a through cutout. This part you see on the bottom was actually the table underneath the part that got scanned. So I happen to know that the, we actually are looking for a complete through cutout in that area. So let's reset the view. I'm just going to go to the line. And so instead of just sort of you know, drawing a line on the screen, I can actually go to these lines, and click on them, and it'll fit a line to that data. Once I fit one line, I can double click and I'm ready to make a new line. Or I can box select, whatever I want to do to fit data. Now again, I want to make a complete through cutout, so I'm going to go ahead and draw two separate lines. 
corner trimming to create this cutout. Oops, that was a mistake. Corner trim. There we go. So that's the profile that I want to use to cut out that part of the model. So let's bring our solid model back up. And let's bring the scan data up as well. And we now need to make a cut. Now in rapid form, when we make a cut, we're still going to use our extrude command. These are our solid modeling functions. Extrude, revolve, sweep, loft. So I'm just going to go to the extrude command. And you'll see that I can define the shape anywhere I need to go. I turn on the cut operator. And now I need to say how far I need to extrude. Now for method, you know, most of you are familiar with blind and through all, or to a surface, but we also can go to a region or to a vertex uh, here in rapid form just because we have the scan data. We can also do things visually, and as I move this, it'll actually snap to values that it sees in the data. So it's snapping to the outer edge. I'm looking for this inside edge, right about there. Let's see how close I came. Let's say 1.635. That's not precise, but you know this is also an area where perhaps you know exactly how wide this thing should be, and you can guide that design intent by saying 1.625. All right, that's my extruded cut. I'll turn on the solid model just so we can see the result of the operation. And there we go. This part's pretty simple. You know, we had some extrusions, some cuts cut out here. Uh, let's add a fillet. So I'll just go to my fillet command and again if you're in CAD you'd have to click on some edges and specify the radius. And I can look at the model again and see that these inside edges are supposed to be, have a small fillet on them. So when I go in here and I click this edge and I click the magic wand it actually estimates what that radius value should be by looking at the underlying scan data. And once I pick that, I could apply it to all these edges. Now I've improved that. Okay? That's what the modeling process is like in rapid form. It's just like CAD. You're making extrusions, lofts, sweeps, uh, revolves, solid operations. Same thing with all the surface operations. Surface extrude, surface loft, revolve. Uh, to create your model here inside Rapid Form. Now when you're finished, we could say File, Export, and I'll say Export this model. And I can export as IGIS or STEP or Parasolid. I have some translators installed on my machine, so I can uh, export as ASUS or CATIA. But all these are dumb solids. Um, hopefully most of you are familiar with that. It wouldn't carry with it all everything I have in my feature history tree, the sketches, the operations, the order of operations. So I need to get this over into my CAD packet natively. You know, hopefully what you're starting to see is Rapid Form is a very competent part model. And again, we're using the same technology as SolidWorks to do it, but you're not going to get rid of your CAD package anytime soon. We don't do assemblies, we don't do drawings. Um, we're really just making parts from the scan data, and and there's a lot of reason to get it over into CAD. So to get it over into CAD, we use something called Live Transfer. So I happen to have SolidWorks up and running on my machine. So I'm just going to go to the File menu, say Live Transfer to SolidWorks, and OK. And at this point, Rapid Form is now controlling the Sol SolidWorks via their developer API. So everything I created natively over here in, in Rapid Form got transferred over into SolidWorks. So that means all of my sketches, all of the constraints, if I put dimensions on things, they've come over as well. I was working in inches over here. My default SolidWorks is set up for millimeters, so a few difference in units. But this is now a native SolidWorks file that I can go and edit everything that I just did. Okay? Pretty straightforward? Not too bad. Alright, let's look at a couple of other models.
This is a demonstration block that we use sometimes, not an actual part. I know we made a physical part, but it just demonstrates a, a large number of features. And it's already been modeled again. And if we want, we can actually roll back here in the feature tree and see how certain things were done. So again, let's look at the scan data for a moment that started like this. And then we be began the process of modeling this as a solid. Now one thing you'll see in this tree is there's basically just a sketch of a square on the bottom and then there's an extrude and somehow I get this perfect fit surface to the model. So if I just go back and I double click this extrude command and look at the options that were used, I actually see it was used, the method was not blind, it was said up to region and trim the region with a fit surface. So in one single operation, it was able to extrude the model up to a surface which it fit to the data that was there and then trim it. And obviously that is not something that is supported in SOLIDWORKS. It does, SOLIDWORKS doesn't have any scan data. So you might say, well, what's going to happen when I live transfer that over to SOLIDWORKS? So, well, let's look. File, live transfer to SOLIDWORKS. Go. Okay, so somehow it made it work. That's because RapidForm, when it knows it's sending something that RapidForm doesn't, that SOLIDWORKS doesn't have, in these cases, it can actually sort of break up the operation into things that it can understand. So there's this new feature, Surface Imported. It's not an editable feature in SOLIDWORKS. It's a surface that was generated as the fit surface to that region, which we then cut in that operation. So RapidForm is smart enough to say, let me essentially, this would be the same as if I'd fit a surface in RapidForm, exported it as IGES or STEP, and then imported it into SOLIDWORKS to make that cut on the top of this model. But luckily, the engineers at RapidForm make that uh, a little easier to uh, put together just by making one operation, saying trim to fit surface, and then it does it automatically when we do the live transfer, transfer into SOLIDWORKS. Now this is not to say that live transfer to SOLIDWORKS works perfectly every time. If you think about it, we're supporting live transfer to SOLIDWORKS, Siemens NX, ProEngineer, AutoCAD, Inventor. We're sort of a, a hybrid CAD package between all of these things. There's some things we can do that they cannot, like the feature that you just saw. And there's some things they can do that we cannot. And there's also some limitations to the developer API in terms of what we can communicate. Now in terms of what features are supported and, and are not supported, it's all listed in the user guide which is included with Rapid Form. So uh, most of the things are listed by menu, so if I look at the file live transfer area, let me go up a page, you'll see a table showing all of the different features that we can create, all of the different packages we support, and then whether that item is supported or not in live transfer. So. You know, here's all the obvious ones. I can do extrude, revolve, loft, sweep, but you'll see that I cannot make an offset solid in SOLIDWORKS for live transfer. There's another feature inside the software that helps you see some of that without having to you know, memorize the user guide, and that's the error list. So we can always show the error list to show live transfer failures for a particular CAD package. And if there is a live transfer fa failure, it will show up here in this list. Now again, this is a case where it, it, it is able to figure out how to transfer that over without any manual intervention. So we don't see any errors in this list, but you can set this up so that as you're modeling, if you do something and, and it's incorrect, then you'll know it, it won't transfer. So for example, ProEngineer handles Boolean operations differently than other operations. So if I put this on ProEngineer, and I was to do a Boolean operation. Uh, let's see something real quick. Uh, turn on my reference planes. And we'll just create a quick sketch on this plane. And then we'll extrude it. And then I'll do a Boolean operation. 
vibration. I get this warning on the screen. Live transfer warning unsupported feature. And that's because, again, I have my compatibility set on Pro Engineer, and Booleans aren't supported by Pro Engineer. There's other ways to do it, of course. Um, but anyway, it's a useful tool to have. Again, if we were using SolidWorks, they handle Booleans just fine, and you would not see that particular error. All right, one more model, something a little more complex. turbine blade it's been modeled. Let's move this over. We'll close down this part in SolidWorks. Dive transfer to SolidWorks. Go. Fairly complex amount of uh, dimensions and things going on here as it starts to build the model. then resume transfer. As I mentioned, not everything works in live transfer. So when this happens, you need to know how to repair it. And it's not difficult to do. For example, if we look at this table of things that are supported, let's see, I'm actually not sure where this particular one is. Actually, I'm not sure where it, where it shows it in the table, but I know it's in there. This Trimming this part with this surface is not supported in live transfer to SolidWorks. So we can see exactly what the intent was of that. We've sort of stopped in this tree right here. And I can roll forward to this next operation. And I can see that this surface was used to cut the top of this model. Now to complete this, I go over and I complete this operation inside SolidWorks. So I'll say insert cut with surface. I don't want to auto select the bodies, so let's also make sure I'm selecting the right thing. My surface cut is using this surface. The selected bodies I want to cut is this. And so now we've completed what we need to complete in SolidWorks. It's just the live transfer and the API can can use to communicate wasn't able to communicate that. But once I have it done, I can now go to the next feature in my feature tree and say live transfer to SolidWorks, resume. And it will just continue on from plane one. So here you're, you're saying it's completing the loft surface of the blade through multiple profiles, doing lots of cutting and trimming. done. By the way, our general rule of thumb is however long it takes you to model something inside XOR, allow an additional 20% to be sure you can complete your live transfer over into SolidWorks. I think that's a very generous rule of thumb. You'll see that these examples we're using here uh, don't require that much margin in order to complete the live transfer. But it's, it's a good guideline, and, um, and you should be able to complete any live transfer of that amount of time. Okay. Oh, one more thing to hide. So now we've got our fully parametric model of the blade natively inside SolidWorks. All right.
So again, wrap form XOR, fastest path to CAD, and live transfer is an important part to doing that. It's, it's important also to have all of those CAD modeling tools and all of the scan data processing tools in the same environment. We know of no other way to, to accurately be able to model um, the parts that you're looking for as well as check them to be able to do the accuracy analysis while you're creating those surfaces and, and features. And that's something that's somewhat unique to Rapid4. I thought I would show sort of a, a gallery of, of some of the, like this is just a small subset of things that we do. We can you know, work with long range data for vehicles. We've done everything from you know, small motorcycles up to the space shuttle. Um, people will uh, completely disassemble engines and create entirely new uh, assemblies of parts for engine blocks. We do a lot of, in aerospace, uh, a lot of work in turbo machinery, both for aerospace and for power gen, um, creating models for CFD analysis, creating models for manufacturing, uh, regardless of size. Once it's inside rapid flow, the size of it doesn't really matter. It can be something small, and we've worked on lots of things in the dental industry, and then it can also be large, like the space shuttle or large boats uh, or anything like that, even buildings. Consumer products. Uh, this is a very hot area right now where people are scanning in cell phones and tablet computers, iPads, uh, because they need that basic shape in order to start making custom cases and covers and everything like that. As well as eyewear and protective glasses and, and lots of different things. Uh, it would be too long a list to list everything we do in consumer products. Lots of work in tooling. In addition to the, the features you've seen so far, we can even take existing CAD models of tooling and refit those surfaces to scan data. So if you have handwork tooling, we can incorporate those changes uh, into actual tooling to help you update your CAD models of tooling. And much, much more. Medical applications, long-range survey applications, uh, you know, capturing as-built conditions or making idealized models, whatever you need to do to get uh, your final results, not only modeled, but also natively into SOLIDWORKS, RapidForm can help you do that. And that's the gist of what I wanted to talk about today. So we're right around 2.30. I think we've got about, or 2.30 Eastern time for those of you in other time zones. Um, I'd like to open it up for any questions that people might want to enter into our question log, and I'll be happy to answer them as best I can. We do. We support both Pro Engineer and up to Creo 1.0 at the moment. I don't think we're yet supporting uh, 2.0. So here it says in our manual Pro E Wildfire 3 to 5 and Creo 1.0. And hopefully, shortly, we'll have a Creo 2.0 support as well. Um, it's very fast. I would say maybe uh, two minutes. So I like to put my money where my mouth is. Let's uh, let's see if I can bring up that model real quick. Oh, that's the demo block. Let's open up the probe plate, so, and I'll uh, delete some of the things we see in here. So again, here's the incomplete data. I do have it already aligned, and we can talk about alignment something in a uh, follow-up conference or something. Um, if I was to make a mesh sketch, again, same practice as we did in the example. I'm really just looking to get the profile. I can fit some 
circles to this data. Whoops, that's actually not what I want to do because I have two different diameters. I have this circle on the top, I have this circle on the bottom. I've got a rectangle as part of this. It might look like I'm doing things visually, but just by making these sketches, it's snapping to all of the scan data. And you'll see that all constraints are added for me automatically. If I do want to put in dimensional constraints, I can do that as well. So if this is supposed to be 4.7 inches, I can put in that design constraint. And we'll extrude that. And again, this arrow will snap to the values in the data that it sees. But perhaps I know it's supposed to be a one inch thick plate. So I can put that in. Oh, this is another nice feature too. Um, when I'm ready to do all these through holes, you'll see that there's no good cross-sectional position to build those holes. So this is somewhere where we'll use what we call a silhouette region. So I can type in a number, I'll just drag this other little stubby arrow. Think of it like a volumetric cross-section. So now all those boundaries that lie within this sandwich region will project up to my sketch plane. So now, I, again, I can fit the circle in the middle, fit the circle in the bottom, make a circular pattern. It doesn't recognize that there's eight features. I, I'm, you know, I modeled this before, so it just defaulted to the last number that I had. Put in a slot over here. And again, full constraint management. If I need to specify that this is a vertical line, I can do that as well. I'll put this in cut through walls. And then finally using uh, you know, the region groups, I can even extract specific geometry. So if I'm looking to get a cylinder out of this data, I just say, give me a cylinder there, and then I'll do a Boolean operation with that. I'll cut the cylinder out of the base. And that's not some esoteric cylinder that only Rapidform understands. It actually from that data, found the rotation vector, created a plane, created a new sketch, the revolve of the cylinder. So if I need to go back and edit this, I can make a change and make it just a pocket, or pull it out, make it a full cut. That's about where I started from uh, in that example, and that hopefully just took a couple minutes. Long answer to a simple question, but uh, again, I wanted to put my money where my mouth was. What else do we have, Tom? Sure. Let's look at this demo block. And again, we'll, we'll roll this back to get rid of everything we've done in here. And I should have some things. I've got some planes. So I've got this sketch from the bottom. Instead of doing that you know, fit with surface, we'll just make a solid block. And our interest here now is to uh, trim this top surface. And let's do it with a loft surface. That's something fairly complicated to do in CAD, but we've got a lot of help to do that for us. So I'm going to go in here and say loft wizard. I want to make a loft of this region. And it's asking me where are my loft profile is going to be. So I'm going to rotate this around so that basically are, they're lining up a little bit with my part a little better. Okay, we'll pinch this in some. We're specifying the number of sections. Let's, let's start at six. And so now when I say next, it actually is generating all the profiles to the model as generating the surface. Now here's what I'm talking about checking relative to the scan data. If I go over here and turn on deviation, I'm sorry, my monitor sort of hops around at this resolution, then this now shows the deviation of that surface in real time while I'm modeling. So I've set my plus and minus allowable tolerance to plus and minus 0.1 millimeters. And you'll see that I'm everywhere in green is, is less than 0.1 millimeters deviation. I've got some areas that are higher, a little more deviation here, or I can crank this down probably see a little more deviation in the model. And what I mean by real time is that I can make changes to this information 
and see the update in the fitting. So for example, I'm going to hover my mouse over this region right here, hold down the control key, and insert a new profile right here. I'm holding down the mouse right now, and when I let go, it created a new profile, added that to the surface, and updated the deviation results. So you'll see that I now have a better fit in that region locally in the loft surface. And that's only possible in a package like RapidForm because we have all of the scan data, all of the CAD modeling tools available, and all of the accuracy analysis inside one package. Now that I've got that surface, I can turn on my solid again, and we'll just say cut surface, or cut width surface, I should say. We'll keep the bottom, hide the surface. Okay, and again, I can also turn on that deviation at any time, and you'll see the, the features I still need to cut out of this model. And by the way, I'm using Ratform XOR3 Service Pack 1, so there's some exciting things in here to help automate a lot of this as well. So we can also cover that in a future webinar. Okay, anything else? If I go to File, I'm sorry, Insert and Import, you're going to see a laundry list of stuff, mostly because we can um, support you know, a wide variety of scanners and industry file formats in the market. But we can also import IGES, STEP, Parasolid. Again, I've got some translators on my machine, which allows me to import ASUS and STEP, native files from ProE and Siemens. We actually have separate, separately purchasable modules to load native CAD files. But even when you load those files, we're not reading in the feature trees from those models. We're real, really bringing in dumb surface and solid information from those models. We can't actually read in all the feature information from those models. If we could, we'd probably be the best uh, CAD file translator in the world, uh, but we're not there yet. Um, so for now, when importing CAD, you're importing dumb geometry into rapid form. It's very useful. Um, but didn't want to uh, set expectations inappropriately. Yes, you can. So uh, STL files to us are basically just like um, the scan geometry that we work with all the time. So this is essentially STL geometry uh, exported, except this is scan data. But if you have STL data from CAD, we can bring it in. We might go into our polygonal editing tools, and you'll see we have a host of those as well, where we would refine some of that data and increase the mesh density just to let some of our region grouping and surface fitting operations work a little bit better um, with some of the regions. But absolutely, you can import STL data, which is exported from CAD systems, and uh, use our feature recognition and uh, dimension and data extraction in order to remodel that data as well. Anything else? Organic models. Um, we do organic models quite often. I'm not sure I have one here set up on my system. Uh, let me check for just a moment. Um, there's two ways we handle organic models. Uh, rather than doing a complete, um, you know, reverse engineered feature-based model like you see here, sometimes we'll just do it with, um, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, what we call auto-surfacing. So it's, it's a very different sort of um, modeling that we do. I'm trying to look in through, whoop, I'm trying to look through some of my, uh, my models to see if I have a nice um, model on this machine that would be freeform.
found a quick model. Um, this is not as organic as it gets. Of course, you know, we often work with bones and, and true organic shapes for medical applications. But I, I figured this is pretty or organic and will hopefully show some of what we're looking at. This is sort of a, a window impression. And on a model like this, if you're just trying to get this shape over into CAD as a nerve surface, we might do something like auto surfacing. So auto surfacing basically, uh, let's do a feature based layout and we'll say next. It's, it starts to detect some of the features on the model, and there's very few features on this model, so it's just you know looking at this sort of change of curvature area, and it will make sure that this network of patches that will be used to cover the entire model will you know, maintain that feature and not just gloss over it. So right now it's doing what we call the, the patch construction, which is this network of patches that encompasses the entire model. Now, normally, if there's any errors, we can step through them. You know, mostly it's looking at uh, sharp patch angles and things like that. But the automatic result looks pretty good in this case. And then we'll just say OK. And at this stage, inside each one of these patches, it's laying out a grid of control points. And so now we have a nerve surface of our organic shape. Now we can use Live Transfer to transfer this to SolidWorks, but it's pretty much the same as exporting the iGIS for step and bringing in the surface, because this is not a surface that can be edited inside the CAD package. But we can certainly work with organic shapes of any kind and create surfaces on them. I hope that answers your question. I know that was a little long-winded, but, um, but yes, we can work with organic shapes as well. That's generally something you're going to do inside the CAD software. Again, wrap form great for part modeling, uh, but that's basically where we stop. We don't really compete with CAD when it comes to assemblies or when it comes to drawings. So if you've defined dimensions inside rapid form, those are going to go across in live transfer. So you'll get all of your actual dimensions in the solid model, but when it comes time to make a drawing, that's something you're going to do in your CAD package. sounds like. From the analysis standpoint, we have a separate package called RapidForm XOV, and I encourage you to go to the website, rapidform.com slash XOV. It'll take you right there. That's the whole purpose of the XOV package is inspection. You load up a CAD model that you have, you load, load up as a scan of the part that you actually produce. So you've got the CAD model of what you wanted, you've got the scan of the part that is as is, and then XOV is all about aligning those two things together, doing sort of a a whole deviation analysis show you globally where the deviations are, and then a, a more quantitative analysis where we can inspect dimensions, GD&T, everything you might want to measure that you might have on your drawing today, and then generate reports out of that. We can even do trend reports that can look at a dimension and how it varies across a group of parts or across a single part over time. So that's really the, the bread and butter of our XOV package for inspection. Here inside RapidForm, we do have the deviation function, which can show you the deviation between the model. And here you can see that the surface that we generated is within four thousandths of an inch of the underlying uh, scan data. But, um, but really, this is designed as a, a, a modeling tool as opposed to something where you import geometry and check them against each other. that's going to about wrap up our presentation. And again, thanks everyone for your time today. My name is Dave Bell. I'm here in the southeast out of North Carolina, uh, but we've got representatives that can help you all throughout the country. Um, if you need to reach me directly, my office number is on the screen, as well as my email address. And again, we thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.